The good thing about both our parties is there's no way we're going to get carried away because we're both in Parliament and we're both unemployed. Their party has the same position as us that we've built in, and that's the time bar, how long we can be a member of Parliament for. That was one of the fundamental issues about rotating the positions and having a different type of party. And they are also all of their MPs, and they've got four MPs in Parliament, and they've got Soren, who's a member of the European Parliament, but all of them take a worker's wage. And that's a big differential when you're actually getting European <laughs> Parliament. They're still really important for us to work with in terms of international links and European links. And also they're a party that are making headway going forward, building those ideas, building the activism, but also have got enough money in the bank to campaign because we know what the other half of the wages go. So from the Red Green Alliance. Thank you, and we all have our struggles. Uh, and I would say one of the toughest struggles I've had was uh, last summer when I was uh, re-elected to the European Parliament. And uh, they had decided to give a wage raise of uh, 1,000 pounds to all the members of Parliament. And uh, then uh, in the, the movement which I uh, was elected for, we said we, we wouldn't have that wage raise. So I had to make a fight with the administration not to get that way. <laughs> this was a fight, I tell you. This is really good. <laughs> but anyway, I want to give greetings from uh, the Red Green Alliance uh, in, uh, in Denmark. We have just celebrated our 20 years anniversary. Uh, we were uh, established in uh, December 89. And for those of you who can remember back to December 89, there was also something with a wall going down in <laughs> East Berlin. But you can say, for many people, it was, how can you form a socialist uh, organization in that time? That was besides the devil. Because uh, we wanted to build a totally other kind of socialism than that socialism or that non-socialism which was collapsed in Eastern Europe, uh, which had taken the name of socialism but was bureaucratic, uh, and uh, in reality a dictatorship over the proletariat and not a dictatorship of the proletariat. So therefore that was the starting point for us. We wanted to build a democratic organization, but it was also a period where there was the offensive of the bosses. You had just had the minor strike in Britain, there was Reagan uh, in the 80s, so we wanted to fight back these neoliberal tendencies. We want to have an anti-capitalistic perspective, and at the same time we saw how the uh, need for an environment move, environmental movement was uh, racing. So therefore this uh, free experience, uh, the need for democratic socialism, the need for anti-capitalism, the need for uh, ecology and <coughs> environmental solutions was the founding basis for our organization which we call the, the Red uh, Green uh, Alliance. And you can say today, uh, in our opinion, this uh, point of view is more uh, valid and uh, more important uh, than ever. Because we have a combined crisis now. We have a crisis of both an economic crisis, which shows that this idea of price-free capitalism is a total, uh, uh, total uh, nonsense, but we also have this uh, uh, climate uh, crisis. And there's no doubt that if the climate was a bank, it would have been saved long ago. <laughs> but the climate is not a bank. And therefore it's not safe, because the system cannot save it because the climate crisis is a result of a wrong system. And therefore the slogan which was raised in Copenhagen at the big demonstrations, saying we don't want climate change, we want system change, is very correct. The problem is, many people understand that we have to do something with the climate change. How do we get people on the streets? How do we mobilize? How do we mobilize against uh, the capitalist system? And actually, we think there are some possibilities to combine, uh, to take these two crises and combine the solutions. We have put forward uh, demands that there should be a job plan uh, helping all the unemployed people in our countries and other countries by making a lot of uh, sustainable energy projects. There's a lot of things to do. I guess that if you take the houses here in uh, Scotland, there's a lot of houses where the heating is just going out uh, 
the windows and things like that. There's a lot of jobs if we want to invest. We have a possibility to combine fighting the, uh, uh, the, the unemployment and fighting the climate crisis. But it means that we want to do it. It means that we don't accept that this system should decide what, how things is uh, going on. And I just want to say a, a few words about the uh, European Union because now I'm a, a member of the European Parliament. And I think it's very important to understand how this European Union is a central tool, tool of the ruling class today to attack uh, workers. The idea in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the European Union, and that's not only in the majority, it's in the, in the Constitution, is market before human beings. Therefore, we all the time see initiatives promoting market instead of human beings. We have this post-liberalization. Now we are going to have the fights, hopefully, in France. We are going to have fights in Denmark. We are going to have fights in Germany, perhaps other places. They also want to liberalize the hospital sector even more. They want to make directives saying that profit should be a part of uh, the, the hospital sector. In some countries, it already is, but they want to impose it in every country. Uh, they also impose wage cuts. We have heard the last days how uh, the Commission has said very clearly that the crisis has to be solved on the back of the workers. The workers have to pay. They say to the civil servant in Greece, you have to get your wage cut. The Commission, the European Commission, when you were electing MEPs, were you discussing that they should be part of a system who say to civil servants that they should have their wage cut? But that's what they are doing now. And that shows what uh, this uh, system is uh, about. And some of, one of the worst things is what they are doing is this social dumping mechanism which they made, where they forbid countries, they forbid countries to demand that foreign workers coming to their country get equal pay. Imagine, we have a system talking all kind of bullshit about human rights, but they make laws saying, for example, in Denmark, we are forbidden to demand that Polish workers get the same wage as Danish workers. That's what they are doing. And what will be the result of that? That, will, of course, will be a lot of uh, uh, anti-immigrant sentiments. But they don't care because they want to have this situation where underpaid, unpaid, underpaid workers is uh, helping the capitalists to uh, solve their crisis. So therefore, uh, it's very important to see the European Union as one of the main, uh, one of the places where we are going really to uh, put a counterattack. When we had the election campaign in Denmark, uh, in the People's Movement against e EU, which I'm elected for to the to the European Parliament, together with the Building Workers Unions, we <coughs> made a big demonstration in the harbour of Copenhagen, where the Polish workers come in every morning. And we had big banners where we said, welcome to the Polish workers. And we had, uh, they came in the morning, so we had uh, bought bread and butter and coffee, and we gave to them when they came in their cars to look for, for work in Denmark. And of course, they were a little bit, uh, what is going on? Some, somebody standing on the harbor saying, welcome to us. And we said to them, yes, you are welcome here. You are welcome to work, but take care, because there's a lot of people here who wants to exploit you, who wants to give you lo lower wage. But you have to get real good wage. The wage as Danish workers are getting, you are going to have the same conditions and you are going to join the unions, uh, the labor unions, uh, which in the building industry have separate branches for Polish workers speaking Polish at the branch meetings in order to organize them. And this shows something very important in the situation we are today. There is no national solutions. There is only international solutions. There are solutions where workers from one country and another country unite to fight the, uh, the capitalists. And I think that uh, to be here, of course, together with you is therefore very inspiring. Uh, I hope that you another time will come to Denmark and be together with us and come to France, the United States, Ireland, wherever, in order to learn from each other. Because what we need in this fight is to learn from each other to get the best experience in order to fight back and win the struggle. Thank you. Yeah.